just ask the name, and uh, it could be a it could be a new, different uh, uh, sense of having friendship. You know what? We have about more than 7.4 billion in the whole world. The population of the world is about more than 7.4 billion, and there's no way you can meet everyone. So every time that you meet someone new, that is a miracle in itself. Amen. It could be a beginning of a new transformation. Amen. God bless you. Can we give God glory this morning? Amen. If you're here for the first time, as you can see, I'm smiling. We would like to welcome you. Can we give God glory for those that are here for the first time? God bless you. God bless you. We are honored that you have visited, and, and today you're a visitor. As a matter of fact, you have a, uh, your own parking spot. That is yours until tomorrow, 24 hours from now. All right. And then after this, before the conclusion of the celebration, we have some uh, uh, we have special coffee. It's from Starbucks. Yeah. It's not the one that you. It is S T A R B O X box. And so Starbucks, we would like to meet with you and give us the honor to to welcome you and just to break bread with you. And that is all what we want. And all those that have invited them, thank you so much. Can we give God glory for those? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. If you were here last week, you were, you're no longer a guest or a visitor. You are a part of the family. And in the family, you don't have any choice, right? You can't have a choice. When you're a family, you have to live together, breathe together, work together, fellowship together, and different types of family members. And you know what? When you're a family, you are La Familia. And so we, are, we will never have anyone left behind. And so that's our privilege. Thank you so much. God bless you. The celebration over. God bless you. Go home. I know. I'm just kidding. Well, if you've been with us uh, last week, we uh, started a three-part series. And it has to do with rising uh, to, to your God-given potential. Rising to your God-given potential. And these are the things that, because last week also, we prayed for the children. Remember that? We prayed for the students. We prayed for the uh, school staff, the principals, the admin. It's our way of saying, you know what, it's going to be a beautiful, fantastic school year for you. They have to start from the basic. Each year is a new uh, experience for each grade level. Sometimes you have to start the seniors, I mean the, uh, the freshmen, sophomore and all that. Every year is a new one, so you start afresh. So I kind of tied that in that, that more or less, I tied in saying, you know, what? why don't we go back to the basic, the core values of what we are as Christians? Because if we don't have the core value, we don't understand who we are in Christ, then it's going to be very difficult for us to, um, to show our testimony and to be the best that God has given to us. And so, rising to your God-given potential, and it's found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and, and it simply says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. In other translations, said, you are a peculiar people. Not weird, but very, very special. That you may proclaim the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous or marvelous light. In other words, before we were sons and daughters of darkness, we did what we need to do. We were not part of his love, his kingdom. He loved us. And so now when we become Christian, what then, isn't it? What is now going to happen? Am I going to be just a person that's existing? Am I going to be uh, just going to wait for the Lord to come? As a matter of fact, when you receive Christ, Lord and Savior, isn't it wonderful that he didn't translate us to be with him? Because he wants us to what? To be lights, to be salt of the earth. He wants us to be a testimony that out of that, they can judge who is our God so that we begin to shine and people will say, that is a Christian, that is a believer. And they begin to understand, they would ask us, show me, what, tell me, what is different from you? you? I knew you before, we used to do this, how come? That is beginning to show his marvelous light. Amen, can someone say amen? Have you been, have, have you been noticing that? People begin to understand why they've been noticing you because there's change in you, All right? And so we are going to talk about three things Last week, we talked about the courage, becoming a person of courage. And we talked about the Joshua journey. You remember that? He had four types. He had four uh, levels. Number one is that he was commanded to be what? To be strong. To be courageous. Step into, step over the fate line. He, God commanded Joshua to what? To be strong. 
And the second one is that he promised him, right? Remember that? He promised him that no one, as long as he lived, will be able to stand him. Sympathy, man? And then the promise. And then the third one, which is what we are trying to convey, is the process. The process is the hardest one. All of us want to have our cake, right? Everyone wants to have a quick, that's why we have the microwave. You want popcorn? Pop it. It's done. But the, the, the level of God's maturate, maturation process, it takes time. It's like it ha- you cannot shortcut God's process in your life. We have to go through the process. We have to go through what we call the school of the Holy Spirit. And then after that, of course, the reward. And last week I said, man, that is powerful that each one of us, God has called us first. And then when we accepted that, then he gives us a promise saying, you know, I've got your attention now. I'm going to do this for you. And then after that, the process is the one that you and I have to go through. And that sometimes could be hard. Why? Because the revelation, our hearts are changed. The content of our hearts is being purged. God is ready to give us what we, that he wants us to have the anointing, but he has to clean the vessels. Amen? The vessels have to be emptied of ourselves, and that is why we need to be courageous to be strong in the Lord. All right? Part two, we will talk about becoming a person of integrity. Part two, right now, we will be talking about integrity. Integrity. Becoming a person of integrity. To become a person of integrity is very hard. Because we are carrying still from the world our, our worldview. When things happen to us, there's a tendency for us to go back how we used to deal with that from our world worldview, the non-Christian. Now, because we have a choice now, we begin to have a choice. Am I going to do this? Am I going to fall again? Or am I going to be a person of integrity? It's my intention this morning that each one of us will go through the biblical definition of what it is to be called a person of integrity. A person of integrity. And out of that, it is my prayer that each one of us will be encouraged saying, you know what? I want to be a person, a woman, a man, a student of integrity because that's all you have. That's all you've got. That's all you've got. A graduate, a student from a graduate, uh, he graduated from a very prestigious school. And he was going to get his first job. He got a job interview. He knew he was going to be up in the ladder of promotion. And the interviewer saw something that was a little bit off. And he says, you know what? You, are, you have graduated from this very prestigious school. And you are, you, you, I feel that you will be going through the rank of promotion. And he kind of leaned towards him and says, if you have... One million dollars, says. If I give you one million dollars, would you lie? If I give you one million dollars, says. Nobody will know it. Nobody will get hurt. No one will be reported. Would you lie if I give you one million dollars? And the young coming up leader, he kind of leaned back and says, You know what? If you're saying that you will give me one million dollars, No one will get hurt. No one will know. No one will report for one million dollars. You want me to lie? And he says, I probably will. I would lie for one million dollars. And the interviewer leaned back and says, Would you lie for one dime? Would you lie for a a dime? He says. And And the upcoming kid says, What do you think of me? And the interviewer says, I already know what kind of person you are. I just want to know what is your price. What is your price? What is your price? What is my price? What is it when the time comes that we'll abandon our integrity? The one that you will have a hard time getting back. See, each one of us is a price. Our price should be that our integrity, our principle must be higher. And that's what God wants us to have. An integrity that is beyond question. That when the time comes, do you know every day, every moment that we 
live is game time. Every moment that you decide is a game time. In other words, game time doesn't mean just when you just play as if. Every moment, every time that you say something, you do something, you live for something, it is game time. For Christians, it is, must be always top of your game. You cannot just be shallow. Every moment we are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Every one of us has a prize. It is my prayer that today before the celebration, we will make a decision to say, God, I want to be a person of integrity, no matter the consequence would be, but I will make sure that I can sleep better, I can sleep peacefully, knowing that I have raised the banner that I am a person of integrity. Amen? Look at your neighbor and tell him, let's work at it. Let's work at it. Let's listen. All right? Proverbs 10 verse 9 says this, The man of integrity or the person of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked path will be found out. The man of integrity or a person, woman of integrity walks securely. He doesn't have to look behind. He doesn't have to look forward. He walks securely. But he who takes crooked paths, shortcut, perverse things, one of these days, it will be fine out. Not at the moment, but it will eventually it will be found out what kind of person that person is. Let me do a test. Can we do, can, is, is that okay with you? Can we do a test? Is that okay with you? The first thing that we need to ask ourselves, am I living a life of integrity? Let me do a quick test. Is that okay with you? I'm not going down if, you are not, if you're not ready. All right. Say, for example, you were a payless. All right? You bought some stuff. And then the change came. The cashier gave you $10 more. And you know it. $10 more. You know it. What would you do? Would you just kind of smile and say, man, what a, what a day. I'm blessed. All right? Would you look at the cashier who never smile at you? You know, this is my day to get 10 bucks back because instead of being paid less, sometimes it feels like pay more, right? <laughs> How about now? What would you do? Would you kind of grin and put it back and say, wow. Or would you tell the cashier, you paid me $10 more? How many would you do that? How many would do that? All right. All right. All of you that raise your hand, you can go home. You pass the test. All of us that we didn't raise our hand, we need to. All right? Somebody gave you $10 more. What would you do? You're walking at Micro Museum Mall and you see a wallet, thick one, from could be a senior citizen because, you know, senior citizens, they always have thick wallets. They have all the bill, receipts, <laughs> thick ones. And so that's why when a, you see a senior citizen, you kind of walk like this because it's, you know, when they sit down, it's like, all right. You see a wallet, a big one. You picked it up. Oh, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. What would you do? Would you pick up $100 and then call the person? Hey, I saw your wallet. It's somewhere there. I can meet you, but sorry, there's no money. Or would you get the dollars and throw it on the trash? Don't even worry about that. It's, yeah. Or would you look at the wallet and look at the senior citizen, God bless you, and you call that person, hey, you know what, I found your wallet. Would you do that? How many of you would raise your hand? God bless you, you can go again. <laughs> Ladies, you were in the parlor, Woo! Saturday afternoon, getting ready. You had your hair firmed, firmed up. You had your fingernails, what do you call that, Finger, manicure, and then your toes, pedicure, okay, you had them done, oh, somebody says massage you as well, you look fresh, you went to the cashier, the cashier says, oh, now, charge you for the hair and pedicure, she forgot the fingernails, lady, would you look, man, they're not even nice, Right? I didn't even like the person who she wasn't even talking. 
would you allow her to ring you for the hair and the pedicure? Or would you say, Miss, you missed out on the manicure? Would you do that? Wow, it's so good when in church everyone seems to know the answer. You know what they call those? Moral dilemma. Moral dilemma is when you there and you say, wow, what am I going to do? Moral dilemma, dilemmas are situations whose sole purpose is this, listen to this, is to test your integrity. Test your integrity. Those are what I call the test of your integrity. Am I living a life of integrity? Integrity means soundness of moral principle, character, completeness, the quality of state of being unimpaired. In other words, it comes from the word integritas, wholeness. Integer, whole, full, not half, whole. A survey was done. In 1991, this many years ago, from the book The Day America Told the Truth by James Patterson, 1991. Look at this. They took a survey and they asked the people what would they do for 10 million. Here are some of the reasons a person, some of them were Christians because they couldn't, are you Christian then? These are the answers that they found out from the people that were surveyed. 25% would abandon their entire family for $10 million. 25% would abandon their church. They would go to another church. 23% would become prostitutes for a week or more. 16% would give up their American citizenships. 16% would leave their spouses. If you're sitting beside your husband or, or wife, hold them, make sure that they're there. Don't do that. 10% would Withhold testimony and let a murderer go free. 77% would murder a stranger. And 3% would put their children to adoption. $10 million would change a person's attitude. For us, it shouldn't be a moral dilemma anymore. It should be something that we already have decided. How many of you have visited the Great Wall of China? I saw that many times on pictures. I haven't. But one of these days, I will. In ancient China, marauders from different, from the north, always come and, 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 and tear up their kingdom. So they decided to say, you know what? We always have this time. We always, the marauders, the, the, uh, the, the, the enemies would come and, and take advantage of us. Why don't we build a fortress? Why don't we build a wall? And they decided to build the Great Wall of China. And that is true. High, thick, and for that, they, they built it so much that it was the Great Wall of China. No one can, their perception is this, no one can commit. Unfortunately, for the next, after the, the, the wall was built, the Great Wall of China, for the first 100 years, do you know how many times that kingdom was conquered? Three times. Three times. The wall, thick wall, high wall, no one can come in through the wall. You know how did they were able to come in? They bribed the gatekeepers. They come in because they can't. So they pay the gatekeepers and they were able to enter the kingdom. They were so busy building a fortress on the outside, they forgot to train their soldiers, their people, how to have integrity, character, and steadfastness. It is amazing how that can happen, but it did because each one of us has our price. Integrity, it says in Proverbs 11, 3, says the integrity of the upright guides them, but unfaithful are destroyed by their foolishness or duplicity or 
foolishness. The wisdom, the integrity of the upright will always guide them. Righteousness guards the man of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Your integrity is very important. First Chronicles 29, 17 also tells us, I know my God that you test my heart, that you examine my heart, and are pleased with what? Integrity. David was a man after God's own heart. He's a killer. He's a soldier. He committed adultery. He murdered his, her husband. But God says he's a man after God's own heart. What is that? It is a continuous crying out, God, search me and know my heart. If there is any sin in me, God, continue to change. Why? Because as long as we are in this world, as long as we have our life here, we will always, perhaps there will be a time in our life that we will be tempted, that we will be destroyed. But that is not the point. The point is this. Once that happens, don't stop there and die out. Search me, God. Let me the integrity because he knows we are all. We cannot do it alone. And I will show you why. What is that that can help us have an integrity in our heart? Integrity has a higher value than riches or fame. Integrity has a higher value than riches or fame. The Word of God says, what would a prophet a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Your integrity, do your word, is very important. It is higher than fame because fame will fade, riches will disappear, but only the thing that you have, the people that can tell you who you are. If somebody asks you, who are you? If you can point someone, can you ask that neighbor about me? Then that is integrity. Integrity has a higher value than riches. This better is a person, a poor man, who walks in his integrity than he who is perverse in speech and is a fool. Integrity is more important. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is crooked, crooked, though he may be rich. What is the world's way of analyzing positions, hierarchy? Who has the money, right? Fame and fortune. But you know, fame and fortune, it has also allowed people of high level of position to crash. Sports, movies, fame and those because they don't have integrity. And God says this, it is better for you and I to be poor than to be rich with our wickedness. Why is it important? Integrity is important because it defines to others who we are. That is the reason why when you meet someone, don't you? I, what's, your, what's your name? And then you say, well, I'm, here, I'm such and such. I work here and my position is this. And sometimes if they don't even, they would ask you, how much are you earning? Who's your family? What, car, what type of cars are you driving? Do you have a big house? Do you have a small house? What are they trying to do? They're trying to what? They don't want to be stretch out where the core of their being, the value that they have, we always want to flout, if we're not careful, what type of person on the outside. But the important thing is this, when you begin, it defines you to others. One of the things about integrity is this, your word is who you are. My word is who I am. There's a culture that says, well, they don't want to say no, and so they would say yes. But they don't have intention of fulfilling. For example, uh, I no. Sometimes you say, hey, let, let's meet. But they're just embarrassed, or they don't want, they don't have answer. Okay, let's meet at seven. You show up, they're not there. And says, hey, you know, I'm here. Well, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, man, I, something came up. Listen, if you gave your word, if, you're gay, if you gave your word to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones, if you gave your word, keep it, do it, unless the world explodes. 
if you gave your word, make sure that you will carry it. Why? That is the reason why marriage, when you say, I love you to someone, what you're doing, you are getting part of your heart to someone that you love, and that person takes it. Slam it. That is the reason why when you break your promise or you violated your love to that person, they get hurt. Why? As if you did not value what they place in their heart. That is the reason why when you and I give our words, make sure that we do it. Amen? Can somebody say amen? Because integrity will continue to tell you, do it. It determines how you will react in certain situations. It demonstrates your spiritual condition. Sometimes you say, well, you know what? I'm just a new Christian. That's fine. But if you're a Christian for more than one year, two years, three years, and you've been in church that's like this, and you still cannot keep your word, I cannot keep my word, may I say this to you? Something, something is gravely wrong. Our hearts are no longer searchable by God. Amen. And if you are young in the Lord, that's fine. But if you have matured enough to know the details, then something is not right. If you lack it, it will damage your testimony. I can ask each one of you, how many people have gone your way where their, your trust and their words are no longer of value? Right? You don't want to deal with them. Why? Because they always what? They always drop the ball. Amen? They lost their credibility and respect. And I'm sure I'm talking to some of us just like each one of us. When I say your integrity is very important to someone because you know how much damage that we do to them when we promise and break it. Amen? And the last one is this, integrity pleases God. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. If anything else, if no one can see, integrity simply means doing the things, whether they see it or not, you're still the same. You are whole. You are a person that can be what? That can be trusted. Becoming, becoming a person of integrity, therefore, means deciding the heart and mind, the whole being, to integrate, put them together, my heart's values. For where your treasure will be, there will your heart be also. For where your treasures are that, that you value, the Word of God says that is where your heart also, that is what your position. When you begin to decide, you and I decide to be a person that can be trusted, that can be respected, that we have to earn it. We have to integrate. We have to decide, saying, you know what? I can imagine some people, I, I blew it. I made promises. I broke it. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to stand strong. I will make sure that I will decide. When I say it, that I will cook for someone, I will do it. When I say I will pick them up at this time, the integrity says, you do it. When you say, I will pick you up at this time, I will do this for you, your integrity will say, you got to do this because your stake, yourself is at stake. Amen. When your integrity says, integrating all my being with three things that we can measure. There are many things about measurement, but there are three things I want us to focus on how to become a person of integrity. Your words, action and your lifestyle life these are the basic your word out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak isn't it that's the word of god says the word of god says you don't have to kill someone all you need to do is look at them like a dagger look and you kill them god says i see your heart you just murder the person amen when you see, uh, we grew up with three wonderful daughters. But my, my wife is the toughest of them all. When the children were growing up, you can see them. When they don't like things, they will what? Roll their eyes. 
Roll their eyes. Can you, do you have any friends or kids? Are you married, you know? I can't even do it. But I have to roll my, in my head. You know, they're so, they're so good that they can actually look at you. And as long as you go, they will. And she knows. You just did that. I'm going to get you. Oh, they just. Why? Because what she wants to do, you break your heart. Just because your integrity is at stake. Integrity is incorporating our words. Say that with me, please. Words, actions, and our life. Three things. If you can be conscious of this, we have a good start. Words, actions, and life. All right. Again, integrity in our words. The Bible in Matthew says this. Again, you have heard that it's been said to people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep your oath you make to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your hand, head, for you cannot make even one hair black or white. Simply says this, let your yes be yes, and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes to the evil one. Why do we do that? Why do we have to, I promise you, no, as my, God is my witness. Yeah, you, have, have you seen that? Watch out. God may give you a lightning you will never forget. As God is my witness, I didn't do this. Right? As if, you know, as God is my witness, my neighbor is my, you know, is my witness. As God is my neighbor, promise. Sure. Everything. You don't have to say that. It says, just say either yes or yes or no or no. But that is hard to say because... But when you say yes, let it be yes. Ask forgiveness, you fail. Because the more you say you don't keep your integrity, you have to have another lie to, to cover another lie. You have to do another lie. You have to do another lie. And before you know it, you will be a lying, you will be a lying, lying, and then your lies will, not, will no longer match. And you say, man, even lies, you don't you know how to lie. Why? Because you don't want to be what? To be revealed with the heart. The words are very important because when you say this, then you do it. Matthew 5 says, let me your name. But above all, my brother says, James, do not swear either by heaven or by the earth or with any other oath. He replies it, but let your yes be yes. Let your no be no, that you may not be full under judgment. Why is that? Anything that is different. See, sometimes, and it's the truth, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I fail all the time. That we always want to please others, so we tell white lies. I hope it's still a lie. But one time, sometimes your heart, here's what happens this, when you lose that you it's like the heart is like there's a there there's this there's this the holy spirit has this like a will when you break your promise and you didn't own it it will move a little many you heard right when you ah oh. and then if you do that again the wheel will start turning and then oh. but because it is turning the gravity of conviction gets lesser because you are getting so used to it not realizing you and I are losing our credibility. Nobody's respecting us anymore because they cannot depend on us. And so when that begins to happen, this will begin to turn and there's no more what they call abrasion or a little bit that will touch you. Eventually, you'll be a person that is always, always a person without integrity anymore. And that is the worst time that you would ever be is that when you begin. So in other words, when you say it, when you gave your word, you know, it used to be, there was a time when you have a, a contract, you would just rest, stretch your hands. Okay, your, your five cows, I will give you five cows and you give me five uh, pigs. Right? And then you shake your hands. Yes. That's a word, right? 
you do that today, you have to have a contract. Right? Why do we have a contract now? Because now the world has changed. For Christians, it must be just, if you mind, I bless you. God bless you. It should be this one is your bond. You don't have to have a contract. Why? Because now, because people don't own up, and so if they don't have a contract, they will find themselves holding the bag and nothing. That's why contracts were done. But for us, there shouldn't be a contract. Say, if you promise someone, hey, I'm going to help you mow the lawn. Okay, here's the contract. Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, please come. Otherwise, there's no contract. No, there shouldn't be anything among Christians. But there has to be a contract. Why? Because you know that person, integrity, is in question. Right? Amen? So you word. Number two, all right? Integrity in our actions. Be doers of the word and not be hearers only. It is not what we hear, but what we learn from. It is not what we eat, but what we digest. It is not what we can see, but what we understand that makes us grow. Integrity says this, whatever you learn, whatever you do, follow it up. When you say word, back it up with action. Proof that you have. You must develop, you and I must develop the habit of following it through with our word. And the promises are daggers to somebody's heart. Amen? When we say something, let's do it. Let's make the habit. It will be a form habit that says, ah, when I say it. Do you have any friends like that that always got your back? Amen? Amen? God bless you. Anybody else? Amen? Somebody said, are you supposed to I think you failed me. <laughs> when you have a friend that you ha has your back, value that person. When you have a spouse that has your back, ooh, love them dearly. Because if you don't, you missed out. When you have a friend, when you have a family, when you have a church that will say, we will do it, we will pray for you, value it. Amen. Make them know. Let them know that you value them. See, the thing is this. Oh, they already know. No. Tap in the back. Say, you know what? You got my back. Man, I appreciate it, man. Next time, if you have any need, call me, and I'll be there. Amen? When, man, I was, I got that song, but I forgot. When you're down and troubled and you need a helping and nothing Nothing is going right. Oh, the rain. <laughs> I knew it's going to rain. <laughs> I'm not going to sing anymore, Lord. Thank you. I know. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. All right. All right. In church, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, the only time I can sing in church and it rained. Oh. <laughs> All right. Integrity in our lives. In other words, our words and our action incorporates to our lives. It is the body. It's our lifestyle. It is who we are that makes us. It has to be an integrity in our life. If you and I don't have integrity, we're just existing. We're just taking space. We are not being productive. The world is not being blessed. We don't have any integrity. Nothing. If you can stand on your word, who are you? What are we? It has to be something that you and I can have an integrity. There was this coach, um, uh, Cleveland Gold, I think. He's been coaching a basketball team for 18 years and they've never won the championship and one year they were able to go to the championship game he's been he's been coaching them and on that moment that night they won the championship game it was a day of celebration the championship game when he came back to the school and started just 
normally checking the grades. He found one of the students, player, was ineligible. His grades were make him ineligible to play. But that person only played in the regional 45 seconds. Look at this coach. So he was in a dilemma. He says, man, I've worked for this for 18 years. We are the champions. But the rule says any person, any student that is ineligible to play cannot play. Otherwise, they cannot have the championship. He couldn't sleep for many days. He couldn't sleep because well, how can he tell the students that he has to approach? So he went to the committee and says, you know what? We won the championship, but I have one player that played 45 seconds during the reg regional, and that makes him not qualified because of his grades. 45 seconds in a game. So because of that, they have to forfeit the championship. When he gathered his students, he says, Coach, why did you do that? We won the championship. It was something that we've been working for. And he said, is this, you know, we can always win championship, he says. But if you and I lose the integrity, then people will remember us as a team that lost it but won it. But remember this, your character is more important than the championship because you will always win one. One of these days. Let your principle be higher than the championship because championship can be won. But when you lose your respect, when you lose your integrity, it is very, very difficult to get back. Brothers and sisters, Christians, we are representing our Lord. Do you know why Jesus Christ has such integrity? Do you know why people of all ages and faith follow Jesus Christ? You know why? Because he has integrity. When he said that he will heal someone, he healed them. When he said that he was going to multiply bread and fishes, he multiplied them. When he said, I will make you see Jesus Christ with his integrity, he made them see. When he said, I'm going to die for you, Jesus Christ with his integrity, he died for us. When he said, I will come back again, after three days, I will resurrect again, he did. Jesus Christ has integrity. And that is the reason why when he says that he's coming back again, mark this, because of his integrity, he is coming back again. How much do we have to honor that integrity when he says, mark my word, I made a promise and I will carry it out. Amen. You as my children, as my those that are witnesses, when you say a word, follow it, back it up with respect and honor, back it up with action so that your life will shine in Christ. So therefore, when it says here, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are becoming new. How do we do this? First of all, ask God to examine our hearts. Amen. Have I been dealing with with a bad desire. Ask God. God, search me. and know my heart. Try me. The second one is this. That is why we need to ask the help of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on. It is impossible for us to have an integrity without the power of the Holy Spirit. The third one is this. Apply God's word to daily activities. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Because the, 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 there might be consequences, but I'd rather that you and I we face the consequences, and our Father is pleased than the other way around. And the last one is this. Develop the habit of following through with our word. Develop the habit of following through with our words. Let's bow our heads. Father, again, we thank you this morning. And I thank you, God, as you are searching. Is this just, Lord, there's so much, but God, help us to have a heart of integrity, a heart that, would, that is whole. Yes, it's going to be hard and difficult, Lord, but you are the God of the impossible. 
Lord, you are our hero. You are our God. You are our Savior. And you, had an, you, you have integrity. You said that you will do it, and you did it. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we also can do it. While every heads are bound and eyes are closed, if you have never received Christ as Lord and Savior, if you have never received Him, or if you want to rededicate your life, you've been on a journey of faith, you've been finding out what fits you, and what God's Spirit has been following you, directing you, I do believe that this is the moment that God has ordained, that He will renew and forgive your sins. If that is your prayer, if that's your desire, would you please follow me with a prayer of faith and just ask God to, to forgive us. Would you follow along, meaning in your heart, so that God can forgive us for our sins. Father, I bow my head before you. I confess that I am a sinner guilty of separation from you but now I understand that you love me so much because of your integrity you promised that you will die for me and you did you took my sins at the cross nailed them and you did your blood was shed at Calvary and it did because without the shedding of the blood there is no forgiveness of my sins now I understand God so I confess, Lord, I repent of all my sins. Forgive me. Jesus, I open my heart and ask you to come and to be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And this is a new beginning. Christ's name I pray. Amen. The second one I want to pray with, with God with us is this. Am I living a life of integrity? I think that's something that we, you and I have to deal with right now. Perhaps you're in a relationship that without knowing it, there have been hurts. The words that we speak, the words that we do say, and the word and the action that we do. Are no longer as our there's no more respect and honor perhaps you may not know this but if that is maybe the case or not by us asking God to strengthen us say God I am your son I'm I, I re represent you you have blessed me so much the least I could do is to be a person of integrity when I say I will worship you I will worship you when I say I will love others I will love them because that's how you want me to be a reflection if that is your prayer I want to pray with you I want to pray with you just just lift up your hands and then I'll just I'll we'll pray God bless you anybody else God bless you God bless you you know I think all of us need this why don't we just stand is that okay with you and I just ask you and just just bow your head together and let us this be a Lord we reveal ourselves before you there's nothing hidden you know our ways the things that we have the words that we have spoken before the actions what that we didn't do or do the life that we have led you know all of them God but this very moment you got us you know us there's no turning back there's no shortcutting you have revealed us by your love that you want us to be to be men and women who gives our word so i ask you god by the power of the holy spirit i ask you that you will forgive us search our hearts search me oh god and all the words that have been spoken words of that we, that we have been backed up actions that that have brought pain and miseries 
to others and and to you, Lord, that you grieve your heart. Forgive me. Forgive us. Help us, oh God, from the time that we have, no matter how long or short that we have, may we rise up to the occasion. Lord, may we be men and women that will say the truth, mean what we say, that we will back it up with action. That when we give our word, that we will do it. That we will always remember that I gave my word. I gave my word to someone. Help us, oh God, to, to finish it. To follow it. I pray, God, that each one of us, oh God, will have a fresh start. Help us, oh God, to become men and women of integrity for you are pleased when you find integrity in our heart holy spirit i ask you that you will strengthen each one of us because every moment is game time every moment is a time of decision every moment is where you can be magnified or can be disdained lord we give you all glory and honor name of Jesus Christ and everyone will say amen and amen and amen. <laughs>